Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. When I was a kid, I grew up on Long Island, and uh, I was in kind of a, a mixed neighborhood. I had uh, a lot of Jewish kids in my neighborhood, and uh, my family was Christian or, or Lutheran. or We celebrated Christmas, in other words, and they and my friends celebrated Hanukkah, and uh, cause there were a couple of families that had both, and they would celebrate both, and I was like, oh my gosh, can you, can you, and then one of them had both and a birthday. It's like, oh my gosh, you, got, you guys have everything, mm-hmm. right? And, and, now, and you have Kwanzaa, so, so if, you, if you're black and Christian and happen to have a Jewish person in your family, I mean, you can celebrate everything. That's right. But what about the atheist in your family? What is he going to celebrate? There you go. There's a new holiday. Did you hear about this? I didn't until now. I didn't until now either. It's human life. I bet you they're saying, thank God for another holiday. Yeah, right, right. (laughs) The retailers. And and, and it's on the 23rd, I think it says here. Um, Mm -hmm. um, We're having fun with it, of course, but we have somebody on the phone to explain it to us. And I think he was a a former minister. Um, Dr. Anthony B. Penn is a leading humanist, a contributor to the Huffington Post, a professor of religious studies at the the Agnes Cullen Arnold Professor, or he is an Agnes Cullen Arnold Professor of Humanities at Rice University in Houston, Texas, and he's talking to us about Human Light, the secular holiday on December 23rd, designed to celebrate and express the positive secular human values of reason, compassion, humanity, and hope. Uh, Dr. Penn, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Good to be with you. Are you in Texas right now? Yes, I am. All right. Well, thank you for being on the air with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Everything that I have read about this interview indicates to me that we could probably talk for hours about this subject, but <laughs> with, the, with such a, sh- <laughs> a short interview, t- tell me, what is, is this a first year for this holiday? No, um, the idea for uh, Human Light uh, really began in 1998. Uh, a group of humanists, the New Jersey Humanist Network, wanted to develop a way to celebrate family and friends without the trapping of religion. Um, In 2001, they held their first celebration with roughly 100 people, human life, as a way of celebrating human values within the context of community. Uh, And so it can involve a meal together, it can involve singing, it can involve storytelling, but again, a way of celebrating human life at its best okay and and do you um do you have a book of reference in other words the the, i guess all the holidays that we have have either the bible or the torah or something they all have some book of reference do you have a book of reference that you point to this is much more open so humanists will point to a variety of texts um and argue that these are sources that give us some sense of what it means to live based upon the best of our thinking and our doing. But there isn't a central book along the lines of the Quran or the Bible. And that might be a good thing, because, I mean, if you're opposed to religion and and you have a central book, then whoever is responsible for writing that book will become a deity. Well, no, that wouldn't be the case. No? This would be a person with particular insights, but for the humanists, uh, they understand their orientation as a philosophy of life without superstition and without God or gods. And so the person who's responsible for this material would never assume the mantle of a deity. No, I wouldn't. No, no, I I, I misled you to think I, I thought that. I mean, like somebody like L. Ron Hubbard, for example, you know, he wrote a book called Dianetics, and now he's kind of like a deity to the, to the Scientologists. And, and I'm not picking on him. I'm just saying that it's, it's the trappings. It's the Jonathan Livingston Seagull story, right, where everybody was worshiping the bird. Remember that? Well, there are humanists, for example, who think very highly of Thomas Paine, but would never project Thomas Paine as superhuman, as mm-hmm. a deity of sorts, just someone who is committed to a reasonable life. Mm. Uh, do you purchase gifts for one another during this holiday? During yeah, it's this understood that gift giving is, is not a problem, in part because humanists understand that even within the Christian context, the idea of giving gifts is a borrowed perception. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. And uh, so giving gifts, celebrating relationships to other humans is not a problem. When a humanist, uh, does humanist and atheist, are they interchangeable words? Uh, no. No, okay. Uh, that the atheist is one who denies the existence of God. Um, and you don't have to go much further than that in terms of atheism. For, for the humanist, they understand their humanism as a philosophy of life that uh, is based upon the best of human reasoning and without superstition and without God or God. It's a, it's, the humanist understands their, their definition as a way of pointing out not only what they don't believe, but what they do believe. Is there a connection with between humans and an unseen force? I, I know you're reluctant to call it God, but is there a connection at all? No, because for the humanists, there's a denial that there is any unseen force operating within the universe, operating within the world. It's just us. That for the humanists, life is explained to the extent we are able to explain it at this point through evolution, not through sacred texts that speak about a divine act of creation. Okay. Does it include other animals, other life forms? It, sure. It recognizes that humans exist as part of a larger web of life, and that at our best we respect, we nurture, and we try to safeguard life in its various forms. Does logic we are part of the natural environment. When you, when you talk about logic, does, does the logic of the humanist in your mind, seem to make more sense than the logic of, let's say, somebody who believes in God? Well, here's the, here's the difference. For the humanist, reason and logic are testable, that there are ways in which science gives us an opportunity to test our assumptions, right. and we can correct and we can shift. But with faith in the workings of a divine being, there is no way to test these claims you do simply because this invisible God said to do. Well, yeah, and that would be religion. But what about intelligent design? Like, if we took away the words Christian and God and Jesus and, and Buddha and all that and just said intelligent design, do you think there is such a thing? No, I think there is evolution, and I think there are ways in which science helps us to understand how life um, unfolds and intelligent design is not the equivalent of science. Well, what is intelligence, then? I mean, if, if there's no intelligent design, then what is intelligence? Well, what we're talking about is human imagination, human creativity, human capacity to think, to analyze, to critically think, to effectively communicate ideas. This is mm. all embedded within the workings of a material understanding of life there is no in the supernatural context. force out there directing no activity. no no and i'm not saying the supernatural force but in the context of human beings but in the in the context of a of a flower for example there's a there's a certain amount of information within that flower that tells it somehow to grow to pr produce food for itself and then to produce a seed and even to attract a bumblebee so it, it can help uh, further the species that sounds like intelligence to me. It, it sounds to me the, as the workings of biological life. But how does it know? I mean, how does it know what to do without intelligence? What is intelligence then? I see. This is where I get stuck on the word intelligence. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is actually. But you have a day to celebrate. That's that's the good news, right? So what? Yeah, there's. Well, do you have a? I mean, how do you celebrate? What do you do? What do I do personally? Yeah. I, I get together with families and my family and my, my friends, and I celebrate those relationships. Uh, you spoke earlier about singing songs. What kind of songs do you sing? Well, I don't sing. I don't have the oh. voice for singing. <laughs> but there are humanists who do sing. Uh. And some of these humanists will just sing um, songs that uh, speak to a quality of life. So, for example, lots of them are deeply connected to the musical, uh, the music tradition that we get from a John Lennon, for example. Or some folks will turn to, uh, uh, to other artists who kind of speak to the quality of human life and without any kind of attention to uh, any... God or God. So there, there's oh. a full range of music. It's, it's 
open to uh, interpretation and humanists pull from musical traditions that make sense to them. Uh, it's a nice. fa- fascinating conversation. So uh, you mentioned John Lennon. John Lennon was very um, obviously aware that people could consider him uh, a religious leader, and he didn't want that. I, going to the religious leader that Christians point to, which is Jesus, it, is anything that he ever said uh, uh, logical? There is an ethics of life that you might be able to pull from this figure if he existed or if he didn't is a different issue, right? And so for humanists, the question becomes, what are the ways in which we can live most productively? And what are the ways we can live productively that allow us to test, to reconfigure, and to reevaluate? And if, and, if the, and, they, and if Christians learn those things through the teachings of a man called Jesus Christ, whether he was fictional or not, uh, their life becomes better because they, they understand that they should judge no one. Judge, you know, judge lest you be judged or whatever mm-hmm. it says. I, don't, I can't quote the Bible, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. although it, it, it doesn't always work out that way, right? So my argument is this. Within the context of private life, people are free to believe what they want to believe. Within the context of our public life, we need a way of communicating, of sharing ideas. We need a vision that is larger than the Christian faith. My goal is to reduce the harm that both theists and non-theists do in the world. Hmm. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on. Like I said, this is definitely a topic that we could talk longer about uh, so that our listeners can look into this. Do you have a website you can direct them to? They can go to my website, anthonypin.com. They can also go to the American Humanist Association website. Okay. Plenty of information available on both websites. All right. And Anthony spells his last name with two N's. Anthony Pin, P-I-N-N dot com. Uh, thank you, Doctor. That was that, uh, that was fascinating, and I kind of wish we had more time to talk. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> You've Got a Garden and We've Got a Show for You, called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. Hi, I'm Fran Darkington. When I need news, I pass the rest and tune to The Source. W-O-C-A. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Central Florida Eye Institute is the area's leader in laser vision correction. From high-definition refraction surgery and LASIK vision correction to custom cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic treatment, you can count on Dr. Crowley and his effective, friendly staff to provide you with the quality care you deserve. Call 352-237-8400 for an appointment or more information. That number again is 352-237-8400. Looking forward to service your vision needs. Whether it's a gift for yourself, your home, for friend or family, a green holiday gift from Bob Wines Camellia Garden says it all. Right now, they've decked the halls with more holiday spirit than you can imagine, including great deals like these. A huge selection of poinsettias, including exciting new specialty poinsettias, starting at $3.99. You'll see multicolored poinsettias. 